perhaps the most important book that uh, put de the design hypothesis on the de defensive was uh, Charles Darwin's book on the origin of species. And uh, Darwin had many great ideas in the origin of species. He championed the idea of change over time. He, he, he proposed a new mechanism, natural selection, that I think is a real mechanism that, that can accomplish real things. And um, he also had a, uh, an idea about the history of life that he proposed, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But the, the central legacy of Darwin's theory, and the one that's being celebrated this year in the anniversary year of Darwin's uh, great book, The Origin of Species, is his claim to have refuted the argument from design. In fact, Darwin, in one of his letters that was published after the publication of The Origin, says, said, there seems to be no more design in the variability of organic beings and in the action of natural selection than in the course in which the wind blows. So though many scientists for, for centuries thought that their job as scientists was to, to detect, perceive, characterize, discover the design and order in nature, Darwin argued that there was no design in nature, that there was the appearance of design perhaps, but no real actual design, and especially not in biology. Now, the, the modern neo-Darwinists, in particular uh, uh, people like Richard Dawkins, who has become a great spokesman for Darwinian evolution, have, have championed that position, and they've made very clear this central Darwinian commitment to the rejection of design. Uh, Dawkins says that biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. Um, uh, Ten points on the quiz for anybody who can identify the important word in Dawkins' quote. It's obviously appearance, not design, but the appearance of design. Now, why, does, why do Darwinians say this? Why do neo-Darwinians say that there's only the appearance of design? Well, it actually makes sense if you understand their perspective. According to Darwinism and modern neo-Darwinism, there is a purely undirected process, namely natural selection acting on random variations or mutations that can produce the appearance of design without itself being designed or guided in any way. That process is natural selection, and according to the Darwinian point of view, natural selection is a purely unguided process that can mimic the powers of a designing intelligence, but which is itself completely unguided and undirected. Now, there's a, an easy way to illustrate this, just uh, uh, almost with, with any example of Darwinian uh, uh, of evolutionary change in action. But here, here's, here's one I made up that I used to use with my students. Im imagine you're a sheep rancher or herder up in, in the, 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 the far north of Scotland. And uh, you've got some, you've got some uh, sheep and you would like to, to breed a woollier, a, a woollier uh, uh, a breed of sheep. So what do you do? Well, it's been long known that if you select the wooliest male and the wool wooliest ewe and only allow those two to breed, then uh, you'll get a slightly woollier group of offspring. And if you, again, in the next generation, choose the wooliest male and the wooliest female, and you repeat that process generation after generation after generation, you can produce a woollier, a woollier breed of sheep. Uh, this is uh, a process that, that is often called artificial selection. The selection is being done by the intelligent rancher or breeder. What Darwin thought is that if you it, that he, he thought, well, that's a real process, and that produces a small amount of change over time. He says, but what if, what if instead of the rancher choosing the, the sheep that will be allowed to breed, what if there's a series of something like a very cold winters, such that only the wooliest males and females survive, and what if that process goes on, a series of very cold winters, environmental change, generation after generation after generation? What will be the outcome? Well, Darwin argued the outcome would be that you get a woollier breed of sheep, just as in the case where you had the intelligent guidance of the, of the rancher guiding the process. So in that case, nature does the selecting. Nature does what only previously the intelligent breeder had done. So that's the Darwinian view, that nature can produce the appearance of design. That organism looks designed because it's so well adapted to its environment, but that appearance of design is illusory. It's, a, it's an illusion because the undirected action of natural forces is really what's responsible. Now, of course, the question is whether or not, and of course, natural selection is a real process and it does produce change, 
But the question is, can it produce every appearance of design? Can it explain every appearance of design? According to Darwinism and Neo-Darwinism, it can. And so that's, that's the first definition we need to put on the table, the idea that the appearance of design in living organisms has resulted from purely undirected natural processes, most importantly, natural selection acting on random variations and mutations. That's the Darwinian or Neo-Darwinian view. Now, the theory of intelligent design challenges this central proposition of Darwinism. It challenges the idea because it says that there are certain key features of living systems, not all things, we don't deny that natural selection is a real force, but there are certain key features of living systems that can be best or better explained by the activity of a designing intelligence, not an undirected process such as natural selection acting on random variation. In other words, living systems look designed because they were designed. Uh, hey, there's a concept. Um, okay, now let's, let's, let's clarify this a little bit. Part of the confusion in understanding the debate about design and Darwinian evolution comes from the term evolution itself. Be because evolution can be, designed, or can be de de defined in several different ways. The first definition is the idea of change over time. Life, and, and that's, a, that's something that you can think of in different ways. If you look in the fossil record, we know that life is different now than it was in the lower strata. Um, that's a form of change over time. We also see small mi microevolutionary changes in, for example, the finch beaks uh, in the Galapagos finches. If you watch the, the weather patterns change there, you see small measurable changes in the shape and, and, and size of finch beaks. And there are other, other documented phenomena of that time. That's not what intelligent design is challenging. We're not challenging this first definition of evolution, of change over time. Nor are we necessarily challenging the idea of universal common descent or the idea of common ancestry. Uh, one of the, the, the things that Darwin put forward was a picture of the history of life that suggested that there were connections between organisms and that, that in, in his view, all organisms were connected on a great tree of life back to a primordial ancestor. Um, some of us who are, hold the theory of intelligent design are skeptical of this idea, others accept it, but the, the point here is that that's not what intelligent design is about. It's not about challenging universal common descent. The third meaning of evolution, however, is where, where we think the, the important argument lies. And that is the, the claim that purely undirected uh, uh, processes are responsible, they are the cause of the change that Darwin describes or asserts has taken place in the history of life. And, of course, he, he said that cause was natural selection, acting on random mutations. There are other evolutionary mechanisms that have been proposed. But we want to say that there are certain features of life that can't be accounted for that way, and you can tell as you examine them closely. Um, so if you have three definitions of evolution, evolution number one, change over time, evolution number two, universal common descent, evolution number three, natural selection as the chief cause of change over time and the cause of the appearance of design, in the theory of intelligent design is challenging that third meaning. 